welcome to the new session of probability convergence make sure you have read the topic probability convergence here i will give you an example with r suppose there is a statement x n bar converges in probability to theta where xn is a sequence of iid random variables from normal theta 1 population what does that mean if we take a random sample from normal theta 1 population that is x1 x2 up to xn then make a sum of them that is summation xi i equals to 1 to n then average it out divided by n which is denoted by xn bar this becomes a random variable right okay by definition this statement does mean for all epsilon greater than 0 probability of the absolute value of xn bar minus theta less than epsilon tends to 1 as n tends to infinity right what is happening here if we take a random sample that is x1 up to xn that is some set of values from normal theta 1 then we make average of these values that is xn bar this is one observation one random observation and we can take r observations of xn let us go to our studio we define a function called sample here x gives a set of observations particularly a set of n observations then what c gives c gives the mean of that observations and return that c what does that sample function give let's run this let's take a sample of size let's say 40 let's run this this gives the value 1.772511 that is the one value of this xn bar if you run this for r times and another function a that is a function of arguments r and n and b be the replication of zero of r times and uh, let's assign the each value of that c to that b order i and return that b then what we have to do is take an observation of x n bar the value of theta obtain the absolute value of it and check whether this absolute value 
is less than epsilon or not let's go to our studio and define another function b that is the function of e for epsilon r and n we set our theta as 2 for i equals to 1 to r for all the observations we have to check that right that uh, whether the absolute value of this difference is less than epsilon or not then make a count of it for how much values uh, that absolute difference is less than that epsilon so let's say that s equals to 0 and uh, s equals to s plus 1 to count it okay then print s by r why s by r if we have 10 observations of xn bar for which this absolute uh, value is less than epsilon and uh, total number of observations is say 100 then what we get is 0 0.1 which is the probability of this quantity right if we keep n increases then whether this probability goes to 1 or not what we are gonna do is we have some observation xn bar minus 2 that does mean xn bar minus 2 lies between minus epsilon to plus epsilon if we have an observation of xn bar then we also have xn bar minus 2 then we observe that whether this value lies between minus epsilon to plus epsilon let's plot remember that i have set my epsilon to 0 0.1 to 1 and take the number of observations 40 and the number of samples that are taken from normal to 1 is 5 let's run this for n equals to 5 uh, some of these uh, values of x and bar minus 2 lies between this plus epsilon and minus epsilon there are just 1, 2, 3 and 4 4 observations are in this region let's make this 5, 50 C. There are more observations that is the values of xn bar minus 2 in this region. If we take n as 100, let's run. Observe that the number of values of xn bar minus 2 gets more saturated in this region if we take a thousand see this probability is also one this probability that is s by r is also one let's run this 
again and again again and again this is quite convincing right <laughs>